Hey guys, it's Steven again. So uh, first video went pretty well, got a couple of subscribers and got some really good feedback and I really appreciate that. Um, I guess the, the number one question I had today was what does it take to start doing this as a hobby? Uh, what kind of investment is it? And I guess the answer is as small as you want it to be or as large as you want it to be, just like anything else. Uh, but I thought just to help with that, I would go through the different supplies that I use um, and I am completely a beginner at this. Um, so I thought I'd go through the different supplies that I use and uh, so you could get an idea of, of what I've got to um, here to produce, you know, what I've produced so far. Um, so of course that starts with, um, the first thing is the molds. So of course I recommend using the Herstarts molds. Um, I don't, I don't guess there really is anyone out there that's like, a, they don't have really, really have a, a big competitor. Um, that I've been able to find that puts out this quality of mold. Uh, Bruce has just done an amazing job, um, very good customer support, and you can get discounts if you order more and more molds. Uh, so like for my first order, I ordered five molds. Uh, I think I got like a 15% break on that. Um, so here's the molds that I have. I have mold 40. Um, so that is the basic brick mold that I use to make my walls. Then also uh, mold 65, which is the flagstone or, or field stone. A floor tile, so that's a very thin mold, and uh, I've casted that hundreds and hundreds of times. Um, and also, the fieldstone tower mold. Sorry about my dog. Um, <laughs> the uh, fieldstone tower mold. So this makes the four um, inch circle circular tower mold out of fieldstone. That's mold seventy two. I've also got um, the. And that was the floor tiles before it was a one and a half inch. This is the one inch, so this is uh, mold number 60. Can't see the number on the back there. The numbers are quickly wear off. They're just written on there with Sharpie and they quickly wear off. So this is mold number 60. This is the one inch floor tile. So matching uh, flagstone or fieldstone. I can't remember, I think it's flagstone. Um, there's the one and a half inch, which I prefer. Uh, and here's the one inch. The one inch is really good if you use a grid in your system. If you use a one inch grid, then of course the floor is easy to see, the grid's easy to see, and you have a built in grid in the pieces that you make. Um, we don't use a grid, so I prefer to cover a much more um, space quicker. So I use the inch and a half. Uh, and then I also have two of the um, in accessories. So I have uh, mold number 58, um, which has a lot of the tavern or in furniture. It has um, a barrel, a bucket, has a crate, um, steps, it has a full bar, um, has a little tiny beer stein, has a door, table, benches, all kinds of stuff. You can go on the Hearst Arts um, mold website and uh, I believe it's hearstarts.com and check these out and look them up by number. And then I also have mold 85, which is the um, cavern accessories molds. My wife got this one for me for my birthday uh, in February and this one does all kinds of stuff, very, very small pieces. I, when I first started um, plastering, I didn't have pa the patience to wait for my Merlin's Magic to come in, so I started trying to use Plaster of Paris. Can't make these accessory molds with that stuff because it breaks so easily that the pieces break while you're trying to get them out of the mold. And then I've got a few um, custom molds. I'll show you, show you two of these. Um, and I am gonna have a video to explain how to make these molds uh, in the near future. So these are custom silicone molds that I made. I realized pretty quickly that uh, I'm going to have to make a lot of these floor tile pieces. So um, that's, let me see if I can get that in focus. So that's this piece. It's four one and a half inch pieces put together. You can see they've been glued together there. Um, so I have to make a lot of those. I have to assemble them and glue them. Um, and so what I did was I made a custom mold, which is actually four of those actually put together already. So I don't have to assemble them. I just pump them out, stick them in the food dehydrator, and give them two hours to dry. Um, so that mold produces this piece. So there's the piece that I assembled, and there's the piece that I molded all together. So of course it doesn't have the deep seam between the four of them, um, but it looked really, really good. And I used that for probably over my, half of my dungeon set uh, that I showed in my previous video. And it saved a lot of time. Another thing is the uh, the walls. Um, I tend to use these basic br basic brick three pieces. So these are three pieces that are put together like that. Um, and then I also use the single bricks that I make my own. So I glue them together and make a lot of those and then I put those together into walls like this. So this is three of those pieces stacked on top of each other to make my wall sections. 
And of course, that's extremely laborious doing that. Um, and so what I ended up doing is I used my basic brick mold plus this custom mold that I made that makes me five wall sections. I wish I could have set six in there because I would have made two walls for every single cast of this. Um, but I wasn't able to do that with this uh, the system that I set up. So that's a custom mold that I made. Makes five of those. Uh, works out really, really well. So here is, um, here is an original piece. Let's see. So here is an original piece from the Hearst Arts mold, three piece. And then here is a piece from my mold. So it's almost exactly the same. You lose just a very, very, very minute amount of detail. But honestly, once you dry brush it, brush it you cannot tell. And I actually tested that, and I built some sections out of both, uh, some wall sections out of both. And now going back, I can't tell which ones they are. So I did want to make sure that it wasn't... Uh, reducing the quality, but it, it's not. Not to the naked eye, you can't tell. I've also got a custom mold um, where I just put a whole bunch of just random pieces um, in there. So this is what was my first attempt. Uh, I've got, actually got some that didn't set up over here because I didn't mix it thoroughly enough, and I used way too large of a base uh, for these pieces. But this has got several of the treasure chests in there, so I can make several treasure chests very fast. I can make a barrel. Um, I've got a door in here, and I've also got a little tree, a Celtic cross. I want to do a dungeon set where I have Celtic crosses throughout, um, just kind of as a theme. Um, I've got the little tree emblem, and then also I put a little, uh, we had a jade Buddha, and I put it in there just to see how much detail I could get. That was kind of a test, so I don't know if you can see that or not, but there's a ton of detail in there. And it, the uh, the cast that I, I'm able to, to create with the dental plaster is almost identical to the jade um, the piece of jewelry we had so um, this stuff is really really cool and like I said I'm gonna make a video on how to make these custom molds in the very near future for those of you that are interested in doing that so molds next thing is the plaster so there's my tub of plaster um, I order that in 50 pound units um, from Swords of Honor. There's lots of different places. If you check out the Hearst Arts um, site, they'll tell you where to order all that the, the plaster from. Lots of different kinds. I've only tried Plaster of Paris, which really sucked. And then um, I use the Merlin's Magic, and it's awesome. Um, it's almost impossible to break it unless you just really slam it on the floor. There are those freak occasions where you'll drop it in a break, but I'm not sure what causes that. It's probably how you mix it. Uh, it probably has to do with how you mix each um, each mix uh, or each um, um, set of plaster that you mix up. Uh, so I just use uh, actually from Matt at Fistful of Dice. I use his method of a digital scale, eight ounces of um, plaster, dry plaster, and then about three ounces or 2.8 ounces of uh, water. Mix those together. I use this plastic measuring cup. Works really well. It's got a spout on it, so I can pour. Just regular metal spoon. Uh, the key to that is each time that you pour into the molds, make sure that you um, wash it thoroughly because once it dries, it doesn't want to come off of these types of plastics. If you're using the little plastic cups like um, Bruce does on his videos, uh, those little plastic cups, then you can just pop it off. But I was going through so many of those cups, I just felt like that was kind of a waste. And uh, so I decided to just use this one um, set of things. So. Mix the plaster, pour it, and I'll make a video about this whole process later. Um, once you pour that, then you let it set. Um, 15 minutes or so with the Merlin's Magic, pop that out, put it in the food dehydrator. Uh, food dehydrator allows me to let everything dry in um, about two hours versus all night. So that was a huge um, bonus or a huge um, speed to what I was doing. So now in a weekend I can finish a project. Uh, versus before it was taking two weekends because I'd allow for dry time of everything and the food dehydrator really speeds that up. And one important thing about the food dehydrator is that it is a fan powered versus convection. So there's a fan that blows across the pieces versus just a heater at the bottom that naturally lets the air rise. Um, so that makes a huge difference in the drying time. Um, when they are dry, then I um, use several different glues. So the good old Eileen's or Aileen's Tacky Glue. Um, so I use that. Half the price at Walmart that it is at Hobby Lobby or Michael's. So make sure you watch those prices because you do use a lot of this stuff. Um, I also use the Turbo Tacky Glue. 
um, in that same brand for little quick things I need to get uh, stick together. And then I also use the clear gel tacky glue for things that I'm going to use where I really want the, the glue to not show up when I paint it. Um, so if there's something that I'm repairing or um, flocking or anything like that where I want just completely clear glue that dries pretty quickly, uh, then I use that Aliens Clear Tacky Glue. Um, so let's see. I think that covers almost everything as far as the casting. So um, I'll end the video here and then I'll pick up um, and go through the rest of the supplies. Um, so check out part two to see the rest of it.